Something that a few commenters picked up on in the last video was that the new HEAR system has been added to PTU and includes a range of styles with physics enabled. We didn't have time to go experience the wind in our hair right now though because we were prepping to take the reclaimer out for a day of experimentation with the new systems on board. And since we last saw it on the channel here, one major improvement is that the main elevator is now working correctly. I was making a stop at the salvage processing deck to begin, as the filler stations have been swapped out for some truly gargantuan new models. The new stations can not only produce 16 SCU containers, but also have an internal buffer of an incredible 360 SCU before any boxes need to be pulled out at all. This front elevator it turns out is still a little finicky, with the button for the up level not working to call the elevator most of the time. The plan was to go pick up Vlad's and Regda, but before making the arrangements, I wanted to hold up somewhere and get a look at the other new addition to the ship, the Claw. The Claw is a key feature of the Reclaimer as a ship, and it has undergone some design changes for this version. I believe that this is only a temporary implementation, and the end goal is for it to behave more like a limb that grabs and cuts things. For now though, it behaves in a similar manner to the new fracturing and disintegration modes of the Vulture. So I was on my way to Houston to pick up Vlaz from Everest Harbour. Regdar was also in Lowville and he'd be flying up from the surface two meters here in space. Yeah, okay, this first pad right here that you're Oh you're cool. Okay, at. good. Did my marker pop up? It did not, not yet anyway. Oh, okay. I see you. I can actually see you. With Vlad safely aboard, we just had to wait for Regdar. Outside the station, but we're here. Sounds good. And while we were waiting, Vlad wanted to come talk about the new hair system as well. I just this is most like my hair, my actual hair, so I just think, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yours is the blown back version and mine is the not so blown back version. It does make the characters look surprisingly more realistic. You know, it's like yeah. a very minor thing, but it does it does make a difference. With Bergdano aboard, we needed a salvage job. This Drake Corsair job. We have got 30 minutes to go and break it up. I'm on. Good, okay. I mean, we technically don't need anyone in cargo anymore, yeah, like... the buffer Like, moving cargo no, is no longer a job, it's it's a phase, right? Like, it's a phase of your operation rather than, like, a dedicated job that someone does, which, which, is, which is great because it means that, like, smaller crews can work the bigger ships, you know. The Vulture now is a one-person ship, you know, it has become a one-person ship finally. The job we'd taken was an illegal salvage of a Drake Corsair in an asteroid cluster over the moon of Magda. Funny if we discovered somebody towing it. <laughs> I was approaching the wreck carefully as I have been known to crash a ship or two in my time. As I said, I'm uh, prone to crashing ships. Can you see? Can you see it? Yeah? Yep, yep. Good, good, uh, good. Good stuff. Good. It's moving though, which is weird. Do we have a track to be on board this thing? Yeah, the secondary on the track. Okay, cool. Yeah. Vlaz was making use of the track to beam to hold the wreck steady. Oh, 
the trawler modules of the reclaimer make fast work of ship hull. God damn, the trawler just clear that, clear that hull quickly, isn't it? We wanted to clear a reasonable amount before breaking the ship apart, and Vlad also suggested that we check for cargo on board. I'll have a quick peek. I'll, I'll go and have a quick peek. Obviously, you can scan for cargo, but who doesn't enjoy a little EVA? Damn! I love the I love that the the Drake like frame underneath is that green color, you know? Yeah. There is, there is cargo, there is cargo, let's see where we go. But I'd forgotten a key tool of the salvager lifestyle. I need to go to the, I need to go to the salvage deck to make a track to be an attachment. Fortunately, salvage vessels have the ability to craft such tools on board. Before attempting to craft, I wanted to see this depot in action with a 2 SCU box that I would eject from the buffer. But another change is that crafting of items now requires both RMC and construction materials, and we didn't have any of the latter just yet. Oh. We don't have the construction materials for it yet. We have 17 minutes to uh, break this thing apart. Oh yeah, you can use the- I just realised, you can use the tractor beam. I'll jump on the claw, right? Reg's had gone out to pull cargo, but for him the bay appeared empty. There is no cargo. What do you mean there's no cargo? Ah, okay. Vlas was going to move the ship into position with the tractor beam as we prepared the claw for action. Okay. Hold R. <laughs> oh my god. Teamwork! <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, okay. Good work, good work. Here we go, we're disintegrating it now. Disintegrating something. Oof. Okay, it is slowly building. Disintegrating the bigger section of the hollow would prove to be a little underwhelming. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Are there any more pieces that need to be moved? No, like, oh, yeah, there might be I think we completed the mission though. Vlas was going to fly the ship as we picked off the remaining pieces. Oh, there is cargo. Now I see it. <laughs> now you see it? Wait, is it just floating in space now? Yeah, I'm seeing a box right below the ship. Okay, oh, cool. that's good to know though, if it doesn't destroy the cargo. Oh my god, that actually... That's gonna make it so easy when you like sub a ship in that boat that like falls on the side and something you just eat it. Or, or like the carrack where like you can't get things out of it, yeah. Okay, here we go. Got it. Vlad suddenly noticed that he now had a crime stat 3. What? I don't have a crime stat. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I know why. It's because we're in the trespassing zone, I guess. Um, we what we should have done is sat in the seat of the ship. That's what people have been telling me anyway. It's a fine, yeah. it's a fineable offense, but I'm at tier three right now, so I don't know if we're gonna. They, they're all, they're all CS ones, aren't they? Like really? Yeah, I could go. I could probably go pay them a fine, I think. We'd need to drop Vlas back at Everest Harbor to pay his fines, but I had some initial reactions to the reclaimer hole munching. 
the sound is very satisfying. Even if no, like like ostensibly nothing is really happening, right? You're seeing an effect build up, but the sound sells it to you. Like, it really sells it. The station is going to shoot at us a bit, I think. If Laz gets ready to jump, basically, we would be hostile to the station. So I was prepping for a hot drop. We're on our way. Decoy is ready to go. We're actually not getting shot at. We're not even locked up. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we're locked up. Okay, glass and jump. And once Vlaz was clean again, we would head back in to pick him up, and he had a job for us. Uh, here's one of the uh, Hearst of Weapons testing site, Magda. What does it do? Uh, hammerhead. Oh, take it. Yeah. We were returning to Magda, but this time the wreck was a hammerhead. Might be joining Regzar on the turrets. The SRV can move it though. I know, which is like, again, it's weird, right? Like, it's probably to make sure that the SRV has got a purpose, you know. One thing I found weird is that gold is the same price as RMC, like a like a cubic meter of solid gold is worth the same as <laughs> it's like a cubic meter of just like reclaimed whole material. And this time Vlas was ferrying cargo from the hammerhead to the reclaimer. Ooh, thank you guys. And soon enough, we decided to just break the ship apart and feed the claw. Yeah, a little bit to the right. If you can rotate. Okay. Tiny bit more. You can see the effect beginning. The piece I'm eating right now is going to fill us up. Collecting the main section of the hammerhead hull was going to overfill us, so it was time for us to go back and empty out the buffer in two boxes in the bay. Uh, okay, okay, give, yeah, give us a second. We'll go back to the, we'll go back and we'll start emptying them out. And this time I would be making the selection to pull a 16 SCU container from the depot. I need to make a track beam attachment, that's why. Um, I'll do it now. Make it over here, I haven't, I haven't done anything. Okay. Yay! For such a large room, the cargo grid space is surprisingly limited, and this definitely wouldn't come into play later on at all. Oh no. Just move it back to 353, uh, 5. What happens if you climb inside the machine? Yeah, I, I tried. They, they blocked the 
Oh, you just can't go in there, is that right? You just can't. Yeah, you just, yeah, it's an invisible wall. Now, there was a moment of confusion with the auto eject feature, as after the first box, the UI resets to showing it is going to eject one SCU again. But I suspected right away that this was only a UI thing, and the boxes that would follow would still be 16 SCU containers. We have enough to nope. pull up the big one. Uh, we still, like, it's at 355.3, so I need to be below oh, okay. 4.7. The buffer had only been partially full, and we had almost emptied it out, but Regdars was about to fill it all the way to full. I should be ready now. Yeah, I think this is the last... Nope, it's still a tiny yeah. bit too much. Oh, yeah. Wait, I'm, uh, I'm ejecting a box now. I don't know if that helps. Oh, yeah, you cannot, uh, yeah, you cannot fracture it further. Okay, now we have the room. Fracturing, uh, disintegrating. Okay, there we go, yeah, wow. Okay, so I'm going to set it to 16 SEU. I'm going to hit auto eject, we take auto eject, we hit eject, and we see if the next box comes out is 16 SEU or not. Right from the get-go, our container handling was not exactly safe. Yeah, I just like myself over. <laughs> Flaz, the um the next box was sixteen as well. I think it just auto spits the sixteens if you say it to sixteen yeah, originally. That's good. And as grid space began to run out, placing the containers became a lot more freeform. <laughs> what is going on? Who oh, no. <laughs> 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 <I> trained you? <laughs> Alright, well we have to consume the uh, the wall amber. I guess we can get out of here to a safer spot. Of course. Jumping in. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. jumped us out of the area, so we were now safe from any interruptions, but there was still a lot of cargo to unload. Gonna make a little fort here. Definitely got enough boxes to use. You can stack boxes willy nilly, you know. Like, that looks safe, right? That's okay. That was good. <laughs> hey, you could build a ramp up to the walkway a bit. <laughs> Flash is making art in the corner. Interesting. It's important to let your creativity speak. Let me pick another salvage mission and start flying us to there. Yeah, why not? You know, I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could fill this more. So uh, yeah, why not? It's the risky salvage you want, right? Not the cleanup. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, there's a Connie. Connie, be good. As we were reaching the end of the cargo to unload, Bragdar was jumping us on to another salvage job. While jumping. I've got a 16 over here, you might get an 8. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, see what happens. But down here in the cargo bay, we take a moment to just admire our handiwork. And, you know. Flaz was moving the smaller boxes to the elevator so we could store them down in the actual cargo hold. Yeah, we're going to put them in the cargo bay. Okay, that's a good idea. I'm with you. Because these are the smaller ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why I was saying like a size 8, like, you know. Cargo seemed a lot more stable on the elevator than before. I'm for a cough. While we're uh, flying there. I'm really excited for like how it really feel like the content is uh, accelerating. So our first round of cargo management was complete, and on the way to the next job, we'd pick up Sharp's katana in space. The next job was all the way out at Yela, and the target was a Connie Andromeda. En route though, I was having trouble getting the disintegration sounds to stop playing. I don't know how to... Maybe I power it down. The Connie in question almost seemed like it had already been hull stripped. I'm gonna go over there real quick. Well, this thing already looks beat up. Yeah, just a little bit. It's ready to be munched. I'm in factory mode. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stay on it. I wanna. I wanna. wanna. Factory field. 
Yep, it is being fractured. Yeah, this looks really cool inside one of this one. It's getting fractured. Oh, you're well, you inside. Well, you don't get fractured with it. Yeah, who cares? For science. It might. For science. It... Uh oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Yep, I'm dead. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, it looked incredibly violent when it went up. You did say it was ready to be fractured. I heard you say <laughs> it. I, I literally went back just to test it. <laughs> I'm not being charged with your murder. No, no. Oh, it actually does actually say. <laughs> <laughs> the cargo had survived though, and Regdar was coming up with ideas. So here's the thing I'm wondering. How much of the cargo survived that explosion? Because if it's all of it, then that's a great... Instead of boarding a ship, you disable it with uh, distortion, you bring a reclaimer, and you fracture it. It kills the entire crew and save the cargo. We got 56.1 SCU from that. Not too bad, is it? Well, let's see. I guess put the lights back on. We'll, we'll see them. There's some wing left here. Pulling in the remaining pieces would not take long. Yeah, it's working. And there's, I think, one more big piece. The VTOL thruster about to be. Okay, I guess we're done here. Yep. I'll uh, jump us to. Should yeah. We... If, if you've got that suit you wanted to do, you know what I mean, I guess we could do it in the. A VLRT suit is not going to be much of a threat to my spine, so. So we were heading back to the cargo bay to manage the new buffer material. The balcony might actually be kind of useful now to like move big boxes around, you know. Oh yeah. yeah they're, they're one, one oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I was say like you may be shocked to learn that this is actually how we left it. <laughs> For now, we just be piling more containers on top of each other. I mean, to be fair, me and Vlad weren't particularly careful about positioning them. Yeah. I think this is the problem with cargo grids, or when you can't put things in cargo grids. Yeah. I mean, eventually we're gonna have to drag out the cargo once cargo elevators are a thing, right? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, once freight elevators are a thing, yeah. We're gonna have to manually load and unload cargo. But I was about to have an actual accident. I don't think so, I don't think so, I don't think so. This so called 2SU box that Katie is Oh god. The box Katana. literally fell on me. The box can... actually fell on me. <laughs> no, I, I had a perfect view of that. I was wondering if that was my side, and then I saw you fell over. Oh, this is what happens you. when you have OSHA violations. <laughs> <laughs> Just like before, the smaller boxes go in the cargo bay. I'm moving these smaller ones down below. We were not done now, as Dragon 8220 had found us a legal salvage job, where the target was an A2 bomber, and we were heading to Houston L2 to collect on it. And I'll bring a reclaimer. And <laughs> we'll have uh, someone bring a Mentis. The canteen is now fully stocked with food and, and drink. Oh. Blaz had been busy making the ship feel more livable, and on the bridge we had some distance to cover before reaching our salvage target. Though, for some reason, the bridge of the Reclaimer was becoming ever more filled with smoke. Dinner I'm guessing the thing of coffee. Got very smoky in here all of a sudden. I don't know why. Get all of you a bit closer. Oh, this is a legal one, so we can take our time. Yeah, we can take the time. Chopper's katana had gone aboard to look for cargo. I mean, yeah, most of the other cargo is processed food, iron, there's some boxes of scrap, and one box of gold and one thing. Uh, grab the gold and one okay. I think we get more from the scrap. But the A2 was not filling the buffer at all, it seemed. It just sat at 0.1 SCU. The depot is filling super slowly. It's only at 0.1 right now, and we've been quite a bit of hull. I think this call for... 
But eventually everyone wanted to see the fracturing again and even the vulture would benefit more in theory from having a hole to munch on instead of just stripping. Looking at the amount of construction material we collect, we'd be filling the buffer all over again. Okay, this, this is going to fill us up completely. At the moment it seems a bit random what piece you actually pull in, but it could be that I'm just not familiar enough with the new system yet. And it is also very underwhelming when a giant piece of hull turns into a tiny cloud of material. Oh. <laughs> I suspect this is a bug that needs to be fixed, but right now it does happen a lot. I love how currently, like, these giant pieces of the ship end up as, like, just tiny little... So we'd made up our mind to head to Lowerville to sell our cargo, but before that we would be managing the buffer contents one last time. You can sell directly from the buffer, but it is a lot more fun to pull out those boxes. I've got an idea, I've got an idea that I want to try. Um, I'm going to... This, is this automatically deploying 16s? Okay, great. I'm going to. I'm going to go up onto the balconies and see if like it's easier to move them from up there. From up here, this looks crazy. It's it's out now. There you go. Is that? So is that it for the cargo? Being above the cargo like this did not make it look any less dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look safe. <laughs> Uh, it looks like a big uh, room after I'm done playing with Legos. <laughs> hey, this, this is our first time doing this. Look at this. That one oh you just placed, that is so not, not safe. Uh, it, it'll it'll, like, trick, uh, it'll uh, catch up on a lip that doesn't exist. Four regs are on the bridge. I would share my screen for him to see what we were dealing with back here. If you look at my screen and you can see the cargo bay, it is... It's beautiful. <laughs> the grids could stack much higher in this room and I think it would be cool to see stacks of containers in here. But I must admit that seeing the chaos that is possible with cargo now and just how stable it is compared to the first iteration is really cool. I'd return to the bridge to get seated before you made landing back on Hurston. And how much does the construction material like this? 12.5k per SCU at the moment. So it, it pays, for, it, it sells for more than RMC. If you can wow. find a place to buy, that will buy it. Now the construction material is sold at admin terminals, not trade terminals. So rather than the business district, we were heading for Leaveston. So for anyone who doesn't know, the, the admin office in is here. But we had a problem, there was just no demand. No demand for any of it here. <laughs> We'd wait a while but it didn't seem to have any movement. We definitely need to like figure out where that stuff where the construction materials are like reliably sold. Unless they do sell here and it's just so many people are trying to sell in that um you know it's killing the demand. We would take the opportunity to head for the business district to sell off our RMC and other cargo though. The gold. 7.2. 161,000 for the RMC. 25 for the Contanium. And just to confirm our suspicions, we would leave Louisville and fly to several different stations and landing zones, including Grim Hex, to try and sell but no one had any demand for construction materials. This is PTU, so credits don't really matter, but I do hope that we see more demand when this goes to live, regardless of how they inevitably rebalance the price of salvaged commodities. 
Overall though, I love the changes to the Reclaimer. I know a lot of people are impatient for the final version of the Claw, but the fact that it has functionality at all now is an amazing step forward. And while the final version of Hull Munching, yes, looks a lot more realistic and involved, for a temporary measure to give us extra stuff to do and to make extra credits in the meantime, I am totally fine with how this plays out. Looking forward to running the Reclaimer a lot more once this hits live. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our very amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. These very generous people, through their support, are what allow this channel to keep going and for me to put out several videos a week. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for helping me to keep the channel going. We'll be back with more from the 322 PTU very soon.